Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and uh, we're we're probably five weeks away from uh, Oshkosh, and uh, we're we're trying to sort out to see if we can get uh, four airplanes up there. And we're our flying options are becoming limited. Of course, everybody's aware of the fact that I had the cowling incident on the uh, Sopwith Pup. One thing, this that has no backup. Can you check? Well, I need to take They're back there fixing it. That's got that's got more clearance than the snipe, so I don't think that's the issue. Uh, we thought maybe there was a little bit of a too tight of a clearance on there. It was part of the problem, but actually looking at the Sopwith snipe that we're thinking about bringing, uh, it's actually got a tighter clearance. So anyway, so the, probably not the issue. Cowling jumped the track, and we're going to go with that for now. Uh, the guys uh, were putting some fuel in. I was going to run the Fokker D7 at this point. Uh, we'd done a, uh, some soldering on a yeah, seam. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so we're going to set it here. Okay, ready? Alright. Okay. Right. We make sure we're getting air into the tanks, checking that out, and then he switches over to the reserve, pumps that up, and all of a sudden you could hear the bubbling in the main tank, because that's the only thing with liquid in it. So at that point, Eric's up there checking, and I get fuel, I hear fuel hitting the ground down here. So come down. When they went back and did some pressure check, they found out there's an internal leak in the tank. So unfortunately, the tank's gonna have to come out. Um, whether or not we have to make a new one, I don't know. But at this point, at least there's no reason why not to take the existing tank apart and see if we can fix it. So the Fokker's out for now, but we're gonna keep working on it. Yeah, let's focus on the, on the pup and the snipe. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it'd be, but I still would like, oh, that's right, we can't run it. <laughs> yeah, we can't run it. But we can run the albatross. Okay, then let's let's get the albatross out and let's get that thing running. We're not put the wings on it. We can run it without the wings. Yeah. Probably. So let's do that. So at least then we've got a couple of rotaries and a Mercedes to run for them. Okay. okay. All yeah, right, that'll that's work. a plan. Joe's going to make some effort next week I to get the containers get the out containers over here because they really got to be like loaded and out of here in three weeks i know yeah uh, the pups going back together the albatross we're trying to get up there uh it won't fly because uh remember a couple of years ago when we took it up there the fabric had gone bad hey i tell you what man i think this fabric's yeah, i'll tell you what man Really, I'm wondering if it's even any good anymore. It's pretty soft. Didn't even get the freaking tent. Didn't even get the five. <sighs> Nothing. It's rotten. The albatross fabric had gone okay. bad. All right, well, that's that takes care of that airplane. Yeah, one other thing that we found about, we went to run the snipe a couple of weeks ago, and, and all of a sudden, the morning we went out to run it, uh, we got a, like an AD, like an airworthiness directive, a service bulletin from TVAL down in uh, Z New Zealand, which actually built it up. And there was a part that we had to replace in the, uh, the little hand pump uh, for uh, filling up the gravity tank from the main tank, which the pilot sits on. So the first time ever we got a service bullet from TVAL, on this aeroplane. Really? Yeah, that I, I didn't even know it was in there. Apparently there's a mechanical driven mechanically driven emergency fuel pump 
and they've had the shafts break on them. Really? In the straight line that it needs to, but what can it go? Sooner or later it's got it's got to go somewhere. Andy was getting the sop with snipe ready for me to uh, run this morning and he came out and he'd fixed all these little things the uh, the the air box valve was gummed up with uh, castor oil so he got that clean so that worked uh, there was some other things that were gummed up and then we found out that he came out this morning and started pulling through and uh, some of the valves are stuck so good. really man what is the what do we got, man? If we didn't have any bad luck, we wouldn't have any luck at all. Stuck valves. Stuck valves? Stuck valves. Okay, no, yeah, but it, that's just for being able to run it right now. Oh, no, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just yeah. I don't think you'll be able to start it. It's, um, yeah, okay. it's a little stiff. Yeah, okay, I've okay. Got, yeah, okay, so we can't start it now. I've got probably three cylinders that got good compression right now. I see. So we just need to unstick the valve. It's just the castor oil. Yeah, it's the castor oil. Yeah, okay. But it's, okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the, rel the respective induction tubes off so I can get the valve stems and then I'll just clean them off. And I mean, the motor spins as freely as you like, but yeah. if you could get it to run, it would run. But right. Like the poor bugger had to profit. I think it would be an absolute misery. Yeah, 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 okay. So well, you do the best you can. If we can do it before you leave, then yeah. fine. We'll try. But yeah, yeah. We'll but if not, no big deal. Yep. So. Anyway, it's sticky, isn't it? Yeah, the <laughs> poker's out. It's yeah, it leaking fuel. So, yeah. anyway, he's got to get in there and take the intake tubes off and clean off the uh, the intake valves. Uh, otherwise, the engine's not going to run. So we get those cleaned up. Uh, that one should definitely be a flyer. Anyway, we're trying. Wish us luck.